Hello, Biology 101. I'm back this time to talk specifically about water and its properties. Now, there is a potential, you will get the essay question, that is, name three or five properties of water. I think I have, I think it's three properties of water right now. And then you also have to describe the molecular structure of water and why it causes it to have these properties. Now, I've already gone over in the previous clip about the molecular structure of water, how the water is polar, how polar causes two molecules to attract to each other, all right, that are water, and that cohesiveness is a very important part of water, um, water's, how it functions in nature. So I'm going to tell you is that the first thing, and I get this mistake frequently, is that when I ask about properties, these are not the same as states, okay? It is incorrect to answer the property question by talking about liquid, solid, and gas, okay? Liquid, solid, and gas are not properties of water, they're states. Let's get that out of the way. Now, next step. Let's look at the properties of water. Now, I have a, uh, I think, you know, one of them is water is liquid at room temperature. Now, that just means that it's the state that when it is liquid has a pretty broad range um, of temperatures, so that's really nice for us. And at room temperature, certainly, it's it is it is liquid, and it is also a universal solvent. That's number two. Now, this is because of its polarity, right? And so, if you go back and look in your text at a picture in there, there is of the sodium chloride ions. When you put them into water, uh, the water molecules all grab, stick all around them because they're polar. It wouldn't be such a great solvent, uh, which is something. Uh, into which other things dissolve, right, if it weren't polar. Um, let's talk about this again. Water, uh, molecules are cohesive. Now, I've already sort of alluded to this. Um, the cohesive nature of water is very important. It gives us things like water tension. A water strider can sit on the surface of water because the molecules themselves are holding themselves together. If you were to take a water strider on water and you were to put a drop of soap on there, soap destroys that cohesiveness and, and, uh, and, and sort of binds up the water molecules, if you will, and then bloop, that water strider would sink. Um, it's also the same thing you feel when you do a belly flop off the high dive and you hit that water and bang, that cohesiveness of water is what is giving you the pink belly effect when you hit the water. Now again, cohesiveness is caused by the polarity, which is caused by these hydrogen bonds, okay? I'm sorry, not caused by hydrogen bonds, but the polarity is a, uh, also causes hydrogen bonds to occur. Now, um, well, let's see, water has a high specific heat is another one. Um, the high specific heat of water is means that it contains a lot of heat. So once you heat water up, it takes a lot to cool it off. And also, when it's cold, it takes a lot of energy to heat it up. And this is an important property because when water has a... Uh, when it's in your body, like your body is mostly water, of course, then your body temperature doesn't change really rapidly. So if you go out in the sun, it takes quite a bit of heat to overheat your body, all right? Uh, so that's an important property of it. In the same way, it takes a lot to get your body to freeze because you're a big mass of water that is resistant to changing temperature, right? So there's one last one I think I have on my list, and that is that water has a high heat of vaporization. And, uh, you know, this one's a little bit tricky, but uh, it, it just means that... Uh, for example, one of the nice properties of this is that when you sweat and the water actually vaporizes off your skin, it takes a lot of heat with it. And so that means that your skin cools. So this is how swamp coolers function. They simply evaporate water, which is a cooling process. Um, it is the same way in which you sweat. It is, uh, uh, yeah, that's a great property of water too. Um, so all of these, oh, I forgot one more property that is one of my favorites, is that water uh, is less dense when it's frozen in its solid state than it is when it's liquid. Now this is crazy, but water molecules, because when they're in liquid state, they actually get very close together and move around because they're attracted to each other. When they freeze, they freeze into a lattice structure that actually holds the molecules further apart 
than they were when they were in liquid state. And that means that the ice is less dense than the water. So ice floats, and this is really important if you're into nature, and I have, obviously I'm into aquatics a little bit, and so you have an entire lecture in this class on aquatic biology and how lakes freeze, and the important thing is that water freezes at the surface of lakes, not at the bottom. Um, and that's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty important property of water. And, and I suppose it's unsurprisingly, um, you know, that cooler water sinks, it's heavier, and warmer water is lighter to a point. And uh, I'll talk about that a bit more when I, when I talk about uh, the aquatics section. But the important thing is that ice floats, right? Um, I mean, if it didn't, these lakes would freeze solid. We wouldn't have any fish after the winter. Right? So that's a bit about um, the properties of water. You may go through and check out, again, my lecture has it all written out pretty clearly. I want you guys to do awesome on the properties of water question because this to me is a place where we integrate molecular structure to function in nature and how molecules behave. It's totally awesome. All right, have a, see you on the next clip.